Uh, hello everyone. Uh, today we are talking about causative verbs. And this is a two-part lesson. We'll be talking about the first part uh, today, and then we'll be jumping into uh, what are called causative passive verbs, uh, which will be the sometimes the more common, uh, commonly used ones, depending on what you're talking about. And we'll be jumping into that uh, next time. So it's a big topic, and it is one that seems easy enough, but it, it can cause some confusion uh, in the way that some of the parts of the sentence get reorganized. And so don't worry. If you don't have all of this sink into your head initially, you'll get there. Uh, and we're here to help you, you know, take those steps. So let's talk about the causative verb. Uh, if you're wondering causative is, we don't really have in the sense of a conjugation, uh, we don't have a causative verb in English. And so if you're wondering why you know, this, this word doesn't make sense to me, is this English? You know, it is, but it was kind of made to describe formations like this in other languages. A causative verb, the name comes from that because it is done, it's a verb that is having someone cause someone else to do that verb. You are causing someone to do that. And it comes in two flavors. Uh, strangely enough, the two flavors are written in exactly the same way, but they're not as confusing as you may think. You can use the causative form to make someone do something, uh, which if you're a parent uh, or a teacher, it, you're used to this. Um, it, it's to make someone do something. And the second one is to allow someone to do something kind of in the sense of permitting them, to give them permission to do it. It's not the actual act of giving them permission, but it's allowing something to take place. You know, allowing an action to proceed. Like letting a friend listen to a song. And we're going to talk about the formation and how to use it. We'll get some examples and all that good stuff. They are created in exactly the same way, but as you might think, making someone do something and letting someone do something, it's usually pretty clear which is which. Because often the making is not something that the recipient is too crazy about. Whereas letting someone do something, it's usually more of a positive action. So first off, we need to talk about how to form it. Uh, causative verbs are similar to passive verbs. Uh, which we talked about before, in that renshu in certain places refers to them kind of as a base form. You know, up until now, we've talked about so many different, uh, I call them verb endings or verb conjugations, in the sense that, you know, you can say, I'm going to just rattle off a whole bunch of them. You can have tabe mas, you can have tabe da, you can have tabe te. Uh, that's not tabe te, that's tabate. Uh, tabe te you know, a whole bunch of different ways of adjusting what's on that back end of the verb. And then with the passive lesson that we learned last time, we learned that there's a way to almost make a new dictionary form, a new base form. So we took taberu, you know, that we used to make tabemas, tabeta, tabete, and we learned that you could say, oh, it's now tabe, taberareru. And this is a form from which you can then change everything on the end. So you can say taberademas. You can say taberarete. Get your tongue all uh, tongue all twisted. Causative forms or causative verbs, and you usually hear it referred to as a verb or a form and not a conjugation because it's not really conjugation in that sense. You're changing that base form after which you can make it pre you know, present or past, polite or casual, and all that good stuff. And so uh, let's see how we actually uh, make it. So it's, like I said, it's fairly similar, except like passive, we're doing the same thing, but we're just ending it in a different way. 
and I get the feeling that my screen is just a bit cut off. So if you'll give me just a second, uh, apologies. Let me make a wrench a bit smaller. There we go. All right. Uh, so if you look at the examples and you keep passive in your head, you know, miru instead of mirareru becomes misaseru. Instead of the rareru, you've got misaseru. And so I'm going to put those right next to each other uh, just so you can say, oh, hey, it is similar to the ones we just learned. So, miru, mirareru, that was the passive. I'm going to do passive first. And then we've got this new form, misaseru. This is the causative form. If we do kiku, you know, these are our godan verbs. You know, before we did kikareru. And now we have kaseru. And it's the same with all the godan verbs. You know, you're changing that first one to the A form from the U form to the A form, and then you're adding seru, <laughs> adding seru to the end. Uh, suru and kuru, as always, are our special verbs. Uh, suru becomes saseru, and kuru becomes kosaseru. Now, don't forget, these are not things that just snap into your head and you remember, you know, instantly. It takes time for these to sink in. And I have good news. Uh, probably by the time people see this video, and for those of you watching now, if you're in the experimental server, we have conjugation schedules to where you can actually practice this. So I'll have you practice any conjugation you want um, automatically each day. And so you can jump in and uh, practice these. But uh, one more time, let's go through them. So if you made someone see something, for example, if someone made me see that poor shellfish that we were talking about in our previous lesson, then um, where's the channel? Uh, where you're in the channel, and then the there's a VC events channel. There's an, a VC channel just below the one you're typing in, but I'm not sure. Yeah, you're in here, and then there's a stream. Oh, they heard me say experimental channel. Sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about the experimental server at the end and let you know how to get into it. Sorry, I should have said server, not channel. Uh, but I'll mention that at the end of the, uh, end of the lesson. Anyway, misaseru, uh, to make someone see something. You know, if you make someone listen to something, kikaseru. If you made someone buy something, kawaseru. And then our, our generic to-do verb, you know, to do something or to make someone do something, saseru, and to make someone come somewhere, kosaseru. Now, we're not going to spend too much time talking, you know, practicing these verb uh, formations because it's, it's mechanics. It's not comprehension as much as you just have to remember those changes. Now, like passive, once you change over to this, you are now in Ichi, uh, Ichidan land. So they're no longer, they're each respective form. They're no longer, oh, this is Ichidan, this is Goldan, Suru is special, you know, Kuru is special. It's none of that. Like passive, as soon as you switch over to causative, everything is Ichidan. So if I say I'm going to make someone see something, you know, and I'm keeping it polite. Our, our generic, you know, our standard, our standard Japanese. You're just dropping that ru off and putting the mas on the end. Misasemasu. So again, don't worry too much about how much this sticks in your head. It it will, you know, it will get there. But let's focus on the construction and you know the sentence ordering and whatnot. Okay. Let's talk about the actual sentence. As you see on the screen, the wa, whatever comes before the wa, usually our topic, 
you know, sometimes our subject. That is whoever or whatever, typically whoever, is making the action happen. So we talked about parents, you know, making their kids clean the room or teachers making the students uh, be quiet or study or stay after school. And with all those situations, the person that's making, again, causative, the person causing it to happen, they're coming first. So if you look at this first sentence, Otou-san wa kodomo ni heya o soji sasemasu. You're going to notice, you know, one more strange thing. So I'm going to, you know, mouse over if you're looking at the stream. Otousa wa. So here's dad, father, or the father. And the father is the one that's making the kids do something. And what are they making them do? Heya o soji sasemasu. Clean the room. However, you're going to notice something that's a bit strange, and that's this little guy, this knee particle. The knee is used to mark who is being forced or who is being allowed to do this action. So let me say that one more time. If you get this, this piece right, causative is pretty easy. This is the only thing that trips people up. Wa is for the person causing the action. Ni is for the person doing the action. You know, here, the children are cleaning. The father is causing them to clean, is making them clean, is forcing them to clean. In the second sentence, and like I said, before I jump to the second sentence, sorry, you know, here, Generally speaking, uh, kids don't like to clean rooms. And so there's no markers in here. There's no grammatical markers that would let you know if it's making or allowing. But you can probably guess most of the time. You can say this is probably going to be received negatively by the doer. So it's probably the forcing version. However, the second song, now maybe if, maybe it's a terrible song, and in the, uh, FIFA, that's a good question. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, with the second one, typically speaking, you know, listening to a song is probably a good thing. And so if, tomodachi wa watashi ni uta o kikaseta, you would say that probably either as my friends allowed me to hear the song or, you know, my friends let me. And when I see this being translated, I typically see those three verbs being used. If it's the causing, if it's the forcing, I hear made or make. If it's the allowing, you know, oh, you can do this, I either hear allow or let. Those are the two most common uh, usages of that. And uh, Fipo, uh, let me answer your question before I, before I continue. Yes, if there is not a direct object like heya o soji sasemas, you can use, you do see that o. Um, or rather, you can, you do see the kodomo o soji sasemas sometimes. We're sticking with the full, the, this longer form, because this one will, you know, this one's the safer one. If you, if you mark them with the ni, you're never going to have any, any confusion there. But you typically almost almost never see, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the time, you're not going to see uh, O twice in a sentence. And in order to prevent that, we, we've got this knee uh, sitting in here. So very good question. So yeah, I, I, I would stick with knee generally. 
Um, but you can use all in a simpler sentence. If there's no, for example, let me give you a one that doesn't have a direct object. You could say, uh, for example, putting, um, oh, well, that's a different form. There's, this is a bad, not the best example because there's a specific verb that can be used in this situation, but, uh, one second, let me type this out. You might hear something like this. You know, I made the kids go to sleep. There's no direct object here. In the sense that the sleep can't really affect something. You don't sleep a bed. <laughs> you don't sleep a pillow. And so here you might see this. However, if like on the page, you've got a direct object, you know, clean the room, you don't want that double O. So you can drop that knee in there instead and you have uh, clarity in what's what's marking what. That was an excellent question, thank you. It might come up later in the lesson, uh, but I wanted to hit that uh, since, you, since you mentioned it. Now, if you are feeling, you know, I wanna make this clear about the allowing, like I wanna make sure it's not, no one mistakes me for thinking that I'm making them do this, but rather I'm allowing them to do this. Uh, you can use our te ageru, te kureru, te morao endings, you know, which we've used in the past that show a positive action, you know, doing this for someone. So if your friends let you hear a song and that was a good thing, you can say, tomodachi wa watashi ni uta o kikasete kureta. So my friends let me hear a song, the song. And then in parentheses, it was a good thing. Like they did that for me, for my benefit. So this does add a bit of uh, clarity. And you do hear this, you do hear this sometimes. So these helping verbs, yeah, they, they, they clarify it just a little bit. They're not required, uh, but you know, you do see it. And the formation is N5 level, so it should be something you're familiar with, but just in case uh, it's not, you know, we have the Ichidan verb, our, our causative forms are Ichidan, so we can switch to the Te form, like it is here. And then we just add the Kureru or Ageru, or whatever happens to be uh, afterwards. So, before we continue, we, we talked about a whole lot. <laughs> before we continue, Let's think about some examples. I want you to help me brainstorm. And again, typically, these are, let's focus first on the, the negative form. Well, it's usually negative, the making. The making form. They made someone do something. Uh, and let's think about situations. And if you need help, think about, think about parents. Think about teachers. Thinking about Think about bosses. What's something a teacher or a boss or a parent uh, would do to someone to make them to make them do something? So, for example, this happens every day because I'm always fighting with my kids about this. Um, and as soon as I type it out, you'll say, "Oh yeah, I this is this is me. This is probably maybe now." maybe earlier in my life. But I think we've all had this. Kodomo ni yasai o tabesaseta. I made my kids eat the vegetables. One of my kids uh, does a pretty good job with vegetables. The other one, she will eat them. She likes them, but not if there's something better on her plate. So it's a constant fight of, of having, you know, making her eat those. So, kodomo ni yasai o tabesaseta. So, uh, what other things can you think of? What what does a parent do? Uh, what do teachers do?
hopefully this doesn't involve your friends. Hopefully your friends aren't making you do bad things or things that you feel negatively about. Sholyu is going uh, big picture here, <laughs> talking about society making making them work. And I use the past tense. Uh, you're not required to do so. So uh, the verb, if the the general rule is if it's ichidan, you just drop the ru and add saseru. If it's godan, if I can type that is. You know, you change that U, the U sound to an A sound. The only special case is the U doesn't become A, it becomes Wa. And then you add Seru, Kawaseru. Uh, matsu would become Mataseru. And yes, uh, some people definitely go that path. They think about the, the Nai form, and then they just chop that Nai off. Okay, so jumping up, um, uh, 51715 uh, earlier on, they were, oh, you want to drop the, on call, you want, there's no sa in there, so kawaseta, otherwise you're perfect. So I'm guessing that, uh, oh, and don't forget, it shouldn't be wa. The wa is used to mark the person that's making them or allowing them do that. So I'm guessing uh, like the father or the mother or whoever let the son buy the game. Let their son buy the game. So kodomo a musuko ni game wo kawaseta. And usually, I didn't mention this, but uh, things like this always come up when we have examples. Typically, it's it's people that are doing the allowing, especially with the allow the allowing part. Like it allows me. So you might, in English, you might say something like, "Oh, work has finally let me take a break," or my my. My body has, is letting me sleep, letting me relax. But you wouldn't typically say that uh, in Japanese. And so you, I would see this more often with the, the people, like making someone sleep, like go to bed, <laughs> as we were last night. We're trying to get our kids back into normal time because their school starts in a few days. And so it's very much a go back to sleep. Or you can go to sleep. It's like, oh, I, I, can I go to sleep? It's so late. And it's like, no, do your homework. Uh, okay, it's it's late enough. You can go to sleep. I would see see it in both of those situations. So I'm going to throw out a few more examples while people are trying. And this is, you know... This this is hard to you can probably think of the English examples. You know, you can think of yeah, they they make me uh they make me do this, they make me do that. 
if you have if you have been to a doctor in any country um you've probably had this happen to you that's matsu wait causative mataseru so the doctor made me wait for a long time Today, there you go. <laughs> See, it happens. Sapphire, you're almost perfect, but uh, drop the sa. No maseta. Otherwise, um, it's great. I love your sentence, and I can relate. <laughs> I can seriously relate to that sentence. Although in my case, it's my son. My daughter will just drink that medicine down and ask for more. My son would rather cry and die before taking some medicine for children. Ah, you you swapped out the wrong character. Not no saseta, no ma, no maseta. What's confusing to a lot of people, um, and this happened to me too, is you often learn this as the saseru form, like the causative, oh, it's that saseru one. And the tricky, the, the problem with that is with, that that only happens with some of them. So, you know, taberu is, and that's your goal, your ichidan verbs, that's your tabesa, I can't, can't write, tabesa seru, there we go. And then your special verbs, suru, is saseru, and kuru is kosaseru. However, everything else, all those ichidan verbs, the ones that end in u, that end in su, and gu, and, and so many others, ku, uh, the su, those are the ones that don't have saseru in them. Well, unless it's sasu. <laughs> unless it one, it's one that ends in su. But those don't, it's not a change it and then add saseru to the end of it. You know, it's kao, kawa, kawaseru. Or matsu, changing the, the A form, mata, mataseru, kaku, kaka, kakaseru. So despite being called saseru, saseru form by many places, it's <laughs> it, it, that doesn't mean you can add that to everything. And again, at the end of the lesson, I'll let you all know where you can practice this specifically in uh, Renshu. So you can get that extra practice for the, the syn not the syntax, but the spelling, the spelling practice. Okay, uh, we have a couple more things to talk about, as you might have guessed by the progress bar. Now. This is a really interesting uh, form that I actually didn't ever see in a textbook, but when I came to Japan, I heard it all the time, all the time. And so I definitely felt like it was worth mentioning in here. If you are making a request, now we talked about this lang being the make and also being the allow. So think about English, you know, we might say, uh, please allow me to think. Please allow me to read this. Please let me have some time. Please let me taste it first. And please let that shellfish live, you know, whatever it happens to be. And so with this, you can use it as a request. And so if you add, if you just have the, you know, the causative form and you put that kudasai on the end, 
it's basically saying, please allow me to. So, mo skoshi kangai sasete kudasai. Please allow me to think a little more. Or, you know, there's some food in front of you and you want, you know, you want to be a bit more formal. You know, you might, we might have learned it, you know, before now. Can I, can I eat it? And top it demo eat ka? But, you know, if you want to be a bit more polite and say, oh, please allow me to have some. Please allow me to eat it. Now, with this, there's the presumption that they're going to say yes. Because you're not saying, can I eat it anymore? You're saying, please allow me to eat it. So it's going to happen. It's going to happen, but you're, you are speaking as if you're giving them the choice. And, you know, it's not that you're lying to anyone. It's not that you're tricking them into saying, oh, I'm, I'm making you think that you're giving it, letting me do it. It's not that. It's just, it's a more polite form of doing it. And so you sometimes hear in, in business situations or in work situations, they'll say, uh, please allow me to say a few words. For the person who was scheduled to say a few words at the beginning of the meeting. You know, there was no question in doubt as to if they were going to say it or not, but they will say, uh, please allow me to say a few words. You know, it's just, it's a bit more polite. Now, let's talk about just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. And there's one more, it's a smaller, it's a smaller little thing that you'll see from time to time. You won't use quite as much, but you'll see it. So let's talk about it. You sometimes see this when you're talking about emotions or feelings. And so let's take a look at these two examples. You know, the teacher um, said something, you know, about about a test or whatever coming up and it makes you really nervous. And so you say, ah, sensei no komento wa seito ni kincho sasemasu. The teacher's comment makes the students nervous. So it's not an action, so to speak. But it's still the same thing happening where the, the topic at the beginning is causing this, this thing to happen. The second one is an interesting one. You know, say your mother uh, is sick and she's gotten better. And, you know, to say her sickness got better or she healed, you would say, you know, byoki ga naoru or byoki ga naota. So my mother's you know sickness got better and so it it literally you're saying and so it relieved me. You know in English you'd say I'm relieved because my mother got better. You know my mother's illness uh, or she recovered or whatever. But here that you see it's more of a literal that the causing is very clear in the sentence. And so, in a sense, uh, for those of you that have English as a second language and all those helper verbs drove you crazy, you know, make, make, and let, we don't have those <laughs> in Japanese. We don't have them. We just have the causative form, the lets you say, I'm making someone do this, or I'm allowing something to do this. And that's it. That's the causative form, or half of it, at least. The chunk we're getting into next time, you know, we learned passive, and then we learned causative, and now we're gonna put them together. So if you wanna see the longest verbs you could ever possibly see, definitely check out our next lesson. Uh, but it has some very specific usages, that are extremely useful, very useful. And 
while I'm waiting to see if anyone has questions, I am. It's not here in the Renshu lesson, but it is an interesting form that I learned once I came to Japan, and so I'd like to share it with you. There is a casual form to um, and Pokochi. I'll answer your question in just a second. There is a casual form to the causative because you know Japanese loves to take verbs and kind of crunch them down and say less. Drop this character out. We don't need that. And saying, saying tabe saseta is not the easiest thing to say. So you often hear things in Japanese being changed to either make them shorter or to make it liter physically easier to say it. And so you often see this. So if we step back from tabe saseru, you often see this form. Tabe sasu. The seru changes to a su for reasons unknown to me. But you see this in more casual conversations, and it's the cas it's the causative form. But it's much easier to say. Much, much easier to say. Once once you get used to it. But if you ever hear a verb ending in sasu, <laughs> you're like, where, where did sasu come from? Sasu is the causative form. So I'll give you a few more examples. Kikaseru, like the make someone listen to something. Um, kikasu. So maybe I maybe I shouldn't have brought this up, but I'm <laughs> based on this uh, reaction. But you do see it, and you don't. I don't think you typically see sasu as something you can look up in grammar dictionaries. Probably in Renshu's as well. And so, at least here, uh, you'll know that that sasu is, is a contracted, casual form of uh, the causative form. And again, this will be available. Um, oh, well, the past tense for that would just be sashita. So if I said I made them eat, tabe sashita. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining us. This video uh, will be available inside our Discord, inside of Renshu, and on our hidden YouTube channel. So if you need to, and this is, if you feel like you need to do this, you're, there's nothing wrong with you. But if you need to look at this again, you know, look at it more slowly, soak, you know, soak it in, that's normal, especially for these verb, these verb lessons. It does, it does take time for it to sink in. Maybe not the concept, maybe you've gotten the concept, but just the ordering, the spelling, and all that stuff, it, it, it takes time. But don't worry about that. You will get it. So thank you so much.